another uh, video tutorial for After Effects. Uh, today I'm going to show how, uh, one technique anyway, how to do this kind of cool ring bracelet animation using only After Effects, no Cinema 4D or anything like that. Um, furthermore, it'll uh, kind of show uh, the feature of a CC cylinder tool. So anyways, um, there's different applications for that, but let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first off, I've got my things set up here, my stage, uh, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go ahead and make a solid background here so we can kind of see what we're doing. Sorry, I'm working with two windows here. So here we go. Let's kind of choose a uh, kind of a grayish green blue. I don't know what to call this color, but I kind of find it pleasing. Uh, first thing I like to do with these solids is, is go ahead and lock and shy those so we don't have to mess with them when we're doing other things. So uh, secondly, we're going to go up to layer. We're going to make a new solid. Actually, it's new shape layer. Forgive me. So uh, this shape layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stroke. Just a simple stroke. So use your pen tool. Uh, the important part here is that you want it to have it all the way from one edge to the other. A little bit of overlap. It has to go all the way across or you're not going to get a solid ring shape. Uh, so first off, let's just go ahead and choose a random color here. Um, we're probably going to change this later, but I just wanted to uh, get something that we can see what our shading is doing, what our light looks like. Go ahead and name that shape layer ring. And then what I want to do is type in, start to type in cylinder, where you're going to get a CC cylinder tool. Go ahead and drag that on there. As you can see, we've already got that stroke kind of revolved around itself kind of like you can do an illustrator and such. So uh, I'll kind of show you here what it's done. So if we go ahead and mess with the X position, you can kind of see you can move it around that way. But watch what happens when I, we mess with the Y position. You'll start to see that wherever this goes, it's actually 3D. We've got a 3D ring. Uh, which is exactly what we want. Now you could certainly stop here if all you wanted to do was make a little ring or a bracelet or a rubber band um, but I want to show you how we can use some of the other things in After Effects to make this work. So um, what we'll do is uh, we will take the shading drop down and the lighting drop down and we will start to mess with these a little bit. Um, now, because we're going for more of a metallic shape, what we want to do is kind of pump up these uh, light directions, pump up the light height. Um, you don't have to use the exact same things I've used, um, but as you can see, you can animate that and also give that a bit of a rotation. So if we uh, click our stopwatch here, um, what we can do is once we get this in the position we want, we can... Uh, you know, make it look like this ring is somewhat revolving, um, as you saw at the beginning of this tutorial video. So let me kind of just tweak these a little bit, get them where they want. Again, you can mess with these. These don't have to be exactly as I've done it. Um, also, you know, if you are working with a different uh, video size, uh, some of these might not be exact to where you want them. But ultimately, you can you want to uh, put a stopwatch in the light height and the light direction and um, you know you want to crank these up roughly to where I've got them but again like I said you can do that I'm gonna go ahead and place a guide so I, I can kind of know where the ground is in this thing so I know when to have this kind of wobble when it hits the ground so I'm gonna crank this all the way up on the position Y I'm gonna put the stopwatch down and I'm gonna move ahead a couple of frames oh, probably about half a second here and then I'm going to drag this back down till we get to about the point that I want it to be uh, based on where I placed my guide. So as you can see, we've got nice 3D space here. The lighting kind of remains constant, but what I can do is I can change those as well once we get this kind of set. So I'm going to go ahead and easy ease those and um, you know then bring up your graph editor um, I think what we need to do is kind of make this have a bit of an impact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just drag that first control point over. You can see that makes it kind of rev up and it drops at a little bit faster pace now. 
and it stops more abruptly, which I think is, is uh, good for this effect that we want to do here with this ring. So we'll go ahead and scrub over that and see if it's to your liking. Again, you know, feel free to play with that graph editor, but I kind of like this one. I use that a lot. So now that we've kind of got stuff where we want it, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, get that color that we wanted. Kind of a goldish color. It's going to kind of uh, tweak a little bit of the lighting we've done. So it certainly doesn't hurt to get your color correct from the very get-go, but I was trying to just get right to the point here. So uh, what I'm going to want to do is again we'll we'll let that scrub through see how that's looking I'm going to change the metal look a little bit here make it a little more dull uh, tweak our roughness let's see get us exactly where we want really there we go that's not quite as blown out and I think that's looking pretty good so again we'll scrub through see how that looks looks pretty good to me so again, now we could again stop at this point, um, but let's uh, let's try to make this look a little bit more like a ring. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set new stopwatches, new keyframes at the light height and light direction, and then I am going to crank those over a little bit. That's probably not crank the light direction quite as much. Let's do the light height a little bit more. So we've got a little bit of a revolve thing going. So it looks like as it lands, that ring is kind of rotating a little bit. And we'll get that back to where it was. All right. So there we go. So now we've got a little impact with the position change. Let's go ahead and easy ease those. And then after it lands, it kind of revolves a little bit. And all we did there was change the light height mainly. And uh, there you go. So again, uh, if you would like to stop at this at this point, you've kind of seen what the CC cylinder tool can do. Um, you know, feel free to do so. If you uh, use a rotate within the layer properties, it will actually uh, unlink your rotation, and you can see if you mess with that a little bit what will happen. But um, you know any of the faux rotation you want to be doing with the light at this point if you rotate your actual layer um, it will create a different shape altogether because what it's doing is it's it's rotating that cylinder effect so again let's look at and see how that impact looks a little bit of a tweak there all right so let's let's go in here Okay, so what I want to do is I want to pre-comp it, as you've seen I've done. If you do it within uh, on the shape layer level, again, it's going to tweak your cylinder. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I pre-comp it before I do any of this rotation. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little wobble when the ring impacts the ground. So I haven't specified where the ground's at other than our guide, but uh, what we're going to do, again, because... Um, a lot of times you want to make a null object and kind of pin the, the edges. Um, but what I'm doing here is not as important because this is going in more of a 3D space. So I'm just going to do a basic rotation. Pin it at 4. We already had a negative 4. And then I want to tighten up when I move a couple of frames forward. I want them to be a shorter um, time frame than I did previously because that's kind of how the wobble works in physics. So you also want to do the inverse of what you've done before each time. So if I do two, I want to do negative two. If I do four, I want to do negative four. Um, and then it's it's diminishing each time I come out so that wobble is lessening just like you would see it on like a can or anything like that. So you can kind of see how that's working. So, again, uh, I'm, I'm not a physics professor or anything like that, but I think we've all seen how things, uh, you know, impact, uh, especially metal things or hard things when they hit wood or a, or a ground surface. There's a little bit of a wobble like that. So I'm going to go ahead and easy ease, make sure that looks good, and uh, it's not too bad. 
I might tighten these up just a touch. So I'm going to grab those all, start dragging those in. Whoops. Grabbed one too many. Oh, did it again. Sorry about that. There we go. That's the ones I want. I'm going to drag those in just a touch. Okay. Let's see how that looks. I think that wobble was a little slow. There we go. That feels a little more natural. You're not going to get a crazy amount of wobble, but a little bit as it impacts the ground there. So again, I didn't use the graph editor here. I just kind of basically used uh, your basic easy ease here to see how that works. And as you can scrub through, you can kind of see um, that impact. It adds a little bit of uh, a little bit of dynamic motion there. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do bulge. That's in our uh, effects and presets um, drop down. You can search that out. It's just basically bulge. It's in the distort drop down as well. So what I want to do is I want to move my horizontal and vertical radius. I also want to move my bulge center so it's right over my ring. So let's make sure that that's encapsulating the entire thing. I've used 412 for my horizontal radius, 202 for my vertical radius. Um, again, you don't have to copy those exactly, but you know you you definitely want that um, center point to kind of align. So again, we're going to have to go back in space a little bit. The nice thing is here is it's following my rotation properly because I've done a pre-comp, but it's not going to follow the motion path. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to keep changing that bulge center and make sure you know you've got that uh, stopwatch keyframe and we're just going to keep moving that up as it goes. So might want to go two frames at a time. Um, you know, those tweens should work pretty well for you. Again, just make sure you've got that bulge center right in the center of where your image is at. And then let's move it all the way to the top. Crank that bulge all the way up. There we go. Again, there's uh, there's smoother ways to do this. I mean, you could add an adjustment layer, something like that on top. Oh, you can see I've, I've missed one there. All right, get that in. Um, you can use an adjustment layer over the top. I'm kind of just showing you a simple way, a quick way to kind of do this. Um, the one thing about the cylinder tools is it's not going to add some of that, um, you know, uh, depth that you might see. It's going to just give you the straight, uh, straight shot rotate. So as you can see here, we've kind of got it nice. It might alter that just a little bit when it lands, but I think with the speed we're at, you can't really tell too much what we've got going on. Okay, scrub through here a little bit, make sure we can, everything's looking good. And again, that looks pretty good. Um, you know, we were able to accomplish this entirely with After Effects. We didn't have to do any Cinema 4D, although the, uh, you know, the four Cinema 4D render engine um, does work within After Effects. Let me show you something cool that you can do though by using it this way. So, if we go back to the ring layer, um, what we can do is uh, let me just build a shape layer to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. The nice thing about using CC Cylinder is you can actually render the front of your object and the back of the object separately. So what that allows us to do is make objects wrap around other objects, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, here, I've got my ring layer. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to place one above this intermediate shape I made and one below. So the top one, instead of render full, I want to go render outside. And then the one that's in back, just go inside. And so what that's going to do is that's going to separately render the front and the back of your element and then you can put something in between, kind of sandwich it in between, and, and as you can see here, now we've got something revolving and, and going over that object. So if I wanted to place a ring on an animated finger or some such, I could certainly do that. Um, you could even have, you know, a beam me up Scotty sort of effect that you might want to do with, you know, kind of rings dropping down on a tube or something like that. But anyways, uh, we're going to go back to our earlier pre-comp, see that everything's working properly, 
and uh, looks like it is. If you're happy with that, you know, you can certainly quit now. If you'd like to do more tweaks, you can do that as well. I'm just going to go ahead and take these keyframes. In fact, I'm going to duplicate that keyframe so we don't have any of that wobble. And there you go. Um, a pretty simple animation and something that's completely done within After Effects. And um, as you can see at the end here, I am going to export this, um, but not before I add a little bit of a drop shadow to that and a bit of a figure ground so you know people can see the spatial relation there. And I thank you for watching and I certainly hope you subscribe and, and uh, I'll continue to make these tutorials for you. Thank you very much.